Uh, I sure will. A uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to the voice. Oh, uh, come on now, dig me, if you will. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. You know, one of the things about being successful. And I was sharing this just the other day with a young man, and uh, he asked me. He said, "Hey, man, I just don't see how." You get up that early in the morning. I just don't see how, man. It would kill me to get up this early in the morning. Well, I sat there and I'm listening to it because it's just a thousand times I've heard it, you know. And my life is, you know, not too different from a lot of people's lives. There's a lot of people out there that rise early. And I just sit there, man, because, I, I mean, first of all, I'm grateful to be able to have a job. I'm so grateful to be able to do one and several that I happen to enjoy doing. I mean, you know, it's work and it's difficult at times, but I mean, you know, I, I, I wanted this, you know, you, you got it. You know, you can't ask God for nothing. Then he give it to you. Then be mad that you got it. Don't make no sense. <laughs> you know, The problem with asking God for stuff is you, a lot of times we ask him for stuff. We don't really know what all it encompasses, what all it really is. And I asked for this now, Along the way, I've gotten far more than I asked for. I want you to do understand that. And, um, you know, that's his grace at work in my life. But I get up early and I go to work because I do understand something, that it is not walking up to you. Nobody walks up to people normally and just hand them checks all the time and enough checks to sustain your life and not only sustain it, but to have a life that where you could enjoy and do some of the things you want to do. I don't know the person that walks out, hands out that money just to be doing it. And then with a lifestyle, though, where you can, you know, give your kids a Christmas, you know, take your family on vacation, uh, you know, a year, once a year. I don't know nobody passing out that kind of money. So I get up early in the morning and I get at it. I was taught to get up early in the morning by my father because my father says, Ain't nothing going to come to you while you lay in there. And you know what? I it, It's just true, man. It's just a little common sense. Look, old people smart, man. They've been around a long time. You don't get, old, you know, some old fools out there, but you know, you don't have to deal with them. But a, old people are pretty smart, man. They've learned a lot along the way. And waking up early and getting at it is one of them things. And I ask everybody, man, to think about this scenario of your life. If a day has 24 hours in it, and let's just say you choose to sleep eight of those hours because they tell you you need eight hours sleep. So you sleep eight hours. That's a third of your life asleep already. Just a third of your life is spent asleep if you're going to do eight hours a day. Now, let's say you have a job that you work eight hours. It is not the job of your dreams. It's not your dream career, your dream profession. It's just the one you took, like all of us, to get it started. And then, like all of us, some of us end up having to stay there because we've created these bills because we checked the check so we can't leave it because we'll lose w what we work for. So let's just say you got a job that you go to work to for eight hours. That's another third of your life. That's two-thirds of your life. Feel how you want to feel about your two-thirds. Well, I like sleep. Okay, cool. There's a scripture about that, too. But now you spend two-thirds of your life, one on a job you don't care for if you're not happy there, or one that just pays the bills and it's not your dream job or career. Another third of your life is sleep. Oh, now let's hold on. Let's talk about the one hour of preparation that it may take to get to the job. That's 17 hours. Let's say your drive time, let's say getting to your job for the average person is anywhere between 30 to an hour. That's an average of what it takes the average person. Now, some people out there hustling way harder than that. But let's just say your average is an hour getting to work. You add another hour to that going to work. You've now spent 18 hours out of the 24 doing something that's either non-productive, you're not happy with, you're not pleased about, is not your dream job, is not your dream profession, and the rest of the time you sleep 18 hours. Now you gotta come from the job. So let's just say it's another hour to get back home. That's 19 hours. 19 hours out of a 24 hour day. You now have five hours left in your day. Oh, you watch TV two hours a day? Okay, excuse me. Let's put, now you put two hours of TV on there. You've just spent 21. You now have three hours in the day to do something super productive for the development of yourself and the future of your family and your future as a person and what you can provide for your family. Uh-oh, 
I need to chill. I need to smoke one. Uh oh. I need some time at happy hour. Seem like all I do is drive to work and go to work. I'm gonna go out with the fellas, drink one. Okay, let's say you spend two hours at happy hour. Nobody go to a happy hour just for an hour. Let's say you spend two hours at happy hour or smoking or some video games. Let's throw that in there. Two hours of smoking, chilling, video games. That's 23 hours of your day gone. Don't you see how your day slips away from you? So why would you get up early? You get up early to get a jump. You get up early to produce, to plan, to become productive. You get up early in the morning to care about every single minute of your day. You wake up early in the morning because you have a plan, a mission. You have something you want to accomplish. The earlier you get up, the more time you have just for you to devote to your plan. You map it out. You make some send some emails. Whatever it is you need to do to get your dream on the way. Then you go get ready. Then you get in your car and go to work. Then you go to your job. But on your job, instead of sitting at your lunch break, messing around with a bunch of people laughing and talking about nothing, playing dominoes, why don't you take that hour to do some more research, to send out some more emails, to put some feelers out there to see what can get you in the place that you want to be. Then when you get off, Instead of driving straight home, why don't you go somewhere in a meeting? You know, take in a session with some people in a positive mental state, group of people that get together and network for business, not drink at happy hour. I said network for business. So after you've done that eight that you don't really care for on the job, you spend some more time pursuing, looking into, researching, working towards, sending out some more applications, putting in uh, some more time to build your new app, discussing some more networking ideas. Okay, that's your happy hour. Then when you go home, instead of chilling, drinking one, having a cold one, smoking one, playing a video game, why don't you take that two hours and devote that to that business idea you got, to that family that you talk about you really want. Spend some time with your children. Put something into them. Do something, man, with all these precious hours that God gives all of us in the course of a day. Take advantage of every minute of that. No human being has more than 24 hours a day, including myself. But if you care about every single minute of that day, You'll be amazed at how much you could get accomplished in a 24 hour day. But you can't get none of that happening because you sleep and you chilling and you smoking. OK, what has that done for you, your family or your future? Care about every minute of your day. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I noticed Jacob is not in his crib. So I look in Sarah's room. She's not there. So I'm like, OK. They're not there. Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. I'm thinking, you know, like, what's going on? Like, this is insane. Like, where are my kids? But despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Because soon after her children went missing, she was declared incompetent to stand trial. You know, when I would ask her, her in-game, it was, I've been advised to remain incompetent. And then I would say, well, who advised you? Troy, you know, I can't tell you that. In Maryland, if a defendant is found incompetent and can't be restored to competency, their felony charges are dismissed after five years. So as the clock counts down, Catherine's charges on the verge of being dismissed. Will a grieving dad ever get justice? Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Rise and shine. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Give yourself that stretch, that moaning, yawning. You sit on the edge of the bed, you thank the man, and then you got to get up, get out, and get something. This is the baddest radio show in the land. This is the Harvey Martin Show. And it's the voice of the nephew holding it down. That'd be me. But you cannot do it without these beautiful ladies. That's Shirley Strawberry, Carla Farrell, Mississippi Monica, and the one and only best play cousin in the world, Kia, Junior Boy Space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody yeah. good? Everybody good. Everybody good. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It's that great getting up morning. All right. Mm-hmm. How was y'all's uh, y'all holiday weekend? It was good. It was yeah, good. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, man. Okay. 
Yeah, let me let me yours. I was let sure. me take time to thank Colleen Texas right. for coming out, hanging out with the nephew at Twice as Funny Comedy Club. That was outstanding. Had a few mm-hmm. teary moments on stage. Had a whole lot of funny moments on stage. <laughs> and, you know, I done told y'all before, I got my stupid back. I got it back. Cool. That's what's up. Ah, well, let me like shout out Chicago. <laughs> let me shout out Chicago V103. Sister uh-huh. Strut. The like, biggest um, crowd to date. We was what? out there strutting breast cancer awareness, so I have to okay. think. Chicago. You look like you had good weather. That's what it looked like. It was cold, precious. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't see it that. It just looked nice. <laughs> I was cute. I was cute, but it was cold. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was cold. It was in the 40s, so what, it was, was cold. cold. How you Ooh, video that is... talk about how you act when you get back home, though. That video had me laughing. That's <laughs> 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 how you act when you get home. Five minutes in Chicago. That's how I act. <laughs> I'm ready to move back. Ready to move back. Yeah, Shirley knows that feeling. It was great, mm-hmm. so... Check me out on Instagram at Lips by Carla. You can see all the pictures Man. and all the fun. See, Carla, you got me thinking. I'm in, I'm in Chicago in two weeks. I'm just thinking I ain't got nothing in my closet for Chicago. I don't. Get you a coat. You play too much. Don't you play with that Chicago weather. <laughs> it's not a game. Right. Get you a coat. That's yes. when you need a pea coat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And an ABC coat. All that. <laughs> EFG X-Y-Z. coat. B, all of that. It's better to get your coat out of Chicago. <laughs> Don't buy your coat in Texas. Get your That's coat right. out of Chicago. Chicago. Stop playing coats. games. Man, mm-hmm. stop playing games. Yeah, Woo. had a good time. I shudder to think. Do y'all miss it? Fair mm-hmm. call. I do. Y'all miss Chicago? I do. I do. Every time I see the TV show The Shy, I miss it. I really yeah. do. The Shy is really, mm-hmm. really good. You know, Chicago's one of those cities is one of the greatest cities in the world, but baby, it's too cold, too long mm-hmm. <laughs> for, for me. Yeah. They've been asking, they've been asking, hey, we should do Ready to Love in Chicago. I say, we're going to start in May and we're going to end in July. <laughs> and, and I mean and May. It might and I mean May. May. Or in May. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, it snowed on Memorial Day. I was done. Yes. Stick a fork in you. Done. Yeah, my my yeah. brand new little short set. Couldn't even wear it. <laughs> you couldn't rock it. Uh-uh. Oh, man. Chi-Town, baby. Big ups to Chi-Town. Everybody yes. there. We love you. V-103. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Get off the break front. My mama don't want nobody on the break front. <laughs> All right. That was good going down Chicago memory lane. All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we will hear from a nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Shirley, we're going to do a little wash and fold. Come on, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Sam or Sammy. Uh, I'm not sure yeah, which yeah, one. This, this Sammy. This Sammy. What's up? Hey, Sammy. How are you? This is uh, this is Kevin. I'm the uh, the manager over here at Fresh and Clean Wash and Fold. Yeah. Well, what's going on, Kev? Um, you bring your clothes here pretty much on a on a weekly basis. Is that correct? Yeah, I stop through probably once a week. Okay, and you're bringing. You know, I mean, you're pretty much bringing a full load of clothes pretty much uh, once a week, right? Yeah, I just bring whatever I got. Okay. Um, well, we got a bit of a problem. Uh, talking to my my employees here that have been, you well, know, what I, they, we, well, we, what, what's going on? I mean, you not get your money or something? Oh uh, no, no, no. You, you, we, we have you on file. You have, I mean, your, your, your card goes through every week when you, um, uh, when you bring your things. So no, that's that's not the issue at all. Okay. All right. Then, what kind of problem could we have? Well, the ladies that are washing the clothes are complaining that when you bring your load in, I mean, I don't know how to really tell you this, but you're. They're saying that your underwear is too dirty. They don't want to wash it. You know, you, you playing, right? No, I'm dead serious. What are you talking about? I my underwear is dirty. I'm not any more dirty than anybody else, sir. All I can tell you is we wash quite a few people's clothes on a daily basis, weekly basis. For my employees to complain about your load, then I have to give you a call and talk to you about it. My man, I, I feel like you around on my phone. No, nah, that's not what this is, bro. This is actually a call, and, I'm, and you know we have we have two options are you here. Out there, you, are you out there calling everybody else? No, I don't have. A, I, I, I haven't had a I complaint. I know there's more dirty people than me going in your spot because I see them. There. Okay, here's the deal. We have two options here. You can scrub your underwear before you bring it in. First off, 
you over here raising your voice now? What are you talking about scrub my underwear? We clean, man. I'm clean. I bring my shit in. I drop it off. I pick it up. Okay. So here's the problem. Once again, I'll start this off. You have two options, sir. You can bring in your stuff scrubbed, okay? When And when my ladies take a look at it, if they're comfortable with cleaning it, so be it. Or, you know, we might not be able to accept your, your clothes anymore. Man, I don't even got to go up there anymore, then. If you if you really playing around on my phone like this, I ain't even got to go up in there anymore. <laughs> Let me talk to your manager, man. I am the manager, sir. I'm Kevin. Kevin I'm the manager, the manager here. You don't sound like the manager. You, how are you what, the manager what, calling my what, 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 what does a manager sound like, then, Sammy? You know, who, who owned the building? Let me talk to him. Okay, he's not here right now. I'm the manager, and I'm the one taking care of this problem. My ladies have a problem with washing your underwear, and I'm calling you to let you know there's a problem. I'm letting you know the way to rectify the problem is you can scrub them before you bring them in, and then we will wash them. If you hey, do bro, not want to do that, you we will not be allowed to take You ain't got to rectify You just need to quit calling my phone on this bull I ain't going to go up there no more then. That's fine. I ain't got to come through your spot. That's fine. You, do you know how dirty, how funky your clothes got to be, man, for my for my people to be telling me they don't want to wash them no more? You know how funky that's got to be, Sammy? Man, who the f*** are your people? Who are your ladies? Man, I go up in there, I ain't never had a problem with their You know what? I ain't never even seen your up in this mother Where the f*** you been at there? Now I look like I got a problem with Kevin. Who the f*** is Kevin, man? You say you the manager. You ain't never f been there. I'm here. I'm just not here when you're here. Are you in the back washing those drawers? What the f is going on with you, man? I'm not in. The, I'm not in the back washing, but I am. I am here periodically when I need to be. Don't worry Kevin, about I when I'm at ass, work, man. I ain't never seen your ass, and I ain't never had a problem with your lady. Hey, well, don't worry about when I'm at work. Worry about how to scrub your underwear. That's what you worry about, man. I'm done with you, bro. What the f you on my phone doing this for, you? man? You know, f your ass and f everybody at that. Washing foe, bro. You know what? I'm trying to be as professional as I can, but the way that you're talking to me, you can wash your damn clothes your own self then. That's what you can do. Oh, that's fine, man. And you can keep on managing a god laundry mat. Whatever the f you doing with your life. Okay, well do whatever you're doing with your life, but do one do the world a favor and clean your drawers. Bro, I'm gonna come through and wash your you keep talking and around on my phone. Hey, man, how you want to do this? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just letting you know. I'm going to double charge your credit card for the amount of work that my people had to do my clothes. As a motherfucker, I'm, putting a, I'm putting a stop payment on my So if that goes through on your end, we're going to have a motherfucking problem. Well, That's I don't know how you're going to put a stop to it when I'm running your card right now. There's nothing okay. you can freaking do. Okay, okay, that's that's fine. I'm going to show up at the fresh and clean there. You the manager. You should be there 50 hours a week then. I'm going to come meet your Kevin. Okay, well, that's that's fine with me. You know what? I don't understand. Why can't you just say, you know what? Let me do a better job at cleaning my underwear. How about that? I don't know what. I know, I know your life ain't that good. I know you over there managing a laundry and and now you getting bored of working. But don't be calling my phone playing around in this because I know you ain't doing this to nobody else. <laughs> I'm exactly doing this to someone. I'm not doing this to anybody else. I don't have to do it to anybody else because nobody's bringing their clothes in like this. Bro, I've been up there. Your employees are more dirty than my. Well, Sammy, evidently not. Evidently not. Your clothes. Why are my employees complaining about you? I don't know. I what? bet your employees complain about your too. They're not complaining about my underwear, Sammy. You're the dirty guy. Man, you know what? I'm done with your. You you got any other you want to talk about? We can talk about Carlton. What the you just Carlton? How the do you know Carlton? I know he doesn't bring his up there. Oh, you want to talk about your brother, Carlton? You want to talk about him? My brother. Carlton, how the f you know? If he's bringing his up there, he just f started. So, yeah, what, what are we going to talk about Carlton? What Carlton doing? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you what Carlton doing. Carlton has been calling me, Nephew Tommy, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show to prank phone call you, Sammy D. <laughs> you, you just got yeah, pranked, you, baby. You yeah, just got you pranked know. by your brother Carlton and the nephew. Hey, <laughs> yeah, man, you, you ain't Carlton. I was going to be about some underwear, bro. <laughs> Oh, we man. need a we need a little wash and scrub, baby. A little wash and scrub. <laughs> man, you you you. <laughs> you up, for real, man. All right, Sammy D. You got to tell me what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Show with nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm through with it. I don't need no praise. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it is Ask the Riddle. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, rapper Kevin Gates spits in female fans' mouth while on stage. Oh, Ew, nasty, oh, nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, the BET Hip Hop Awards are tonight. You don't want to miss that. And The Exorcist Believer, number one movie in America right now. People just love being scared, I guess. Plus, former President Obama and President Biden speak out following the attack on Israel. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the Riddolo and Junior. Here we go. This one's from Travis in the DMV. Travis writes, I'm 39 years old and dating a 59-year-old woman, and we have to plan sex. I'm a spontaneous person, and when we are on vacation, I wanted it all the time. She always tells me that she has to prep for it. Why can't she be ready to go when I am? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Boy, you're 30 something. She, she, she right. She got to Let me tell you something. You, you better not try to do it and she ain't prepped. I'm telling you that right now. Don't try that. And she ain't prepped. Uh-huh. I don't even know why. <laughs> they, they shouldn't have asked me, Carl. Hey, they shouldn't have asked me. What? They shouldn't have asked, okay? <laughs> Run over there, that 50 something year old lady, and she ain't prepped up and ready for you yet. Mm-hmm. It's not going to 58. Same thing. I mm-hmm. promise you. You want her to be prepped. You want her to do everything she need to do, okay? Give her a time. No, you can't be, you, you 30 something. You can't be just once and twice a day and two, three times a day and every other day. That ain't, that don't work like that. No. no. Me and Jackie is on Thursdays, okay? okay. Don't nothing happen. Ain't nothing happen Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday. Thank I look forward sharing. to it. Thursday. We need to know the specific This is Tuesday. Day. Thursday at 1045. I don't 1045. want that in my head. Well, why do we need to know that, though? From 1045 to 11. That's it. Junior. What? Yeah. Junior, what do you have? Please I'm, I'm with save you. us. You can't, you can't rush Miss Iris. <laughs> you cannot rush Miss Iris. <laughs> she is 59. You know how much medication 58. you got to take first before she had, Either way. Either way, that- 58, 59. She got to take her medication. She got to get the arthritis down before y'all start doing this stuff. The arthritis is messing with her. She has to be prepped. You know, she it's got to. You know, 58 is the new 30. Don't you know that? I, I don't know, right. but Miss Iris don't want to rush it. What? She ain't acting yes. like it's the new 30. She acting like it's the new 58. That's what she acting like. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on to Jelani and uh, Shreveport. Jelani writes, I work at a gas station part-time, and I saw a friend of mine with my sister's husband. I told her I saw them, and she has stopped talking to me. My only issue is that I had sex with him, and he's a man whore. Should I warn my friend about him? Mm. No, you need to mind your damn business. All you got to do is turn pump pump three and pump four on. That ain't got nothing to do with you. (laughs) You work the gas station. That's what you do. You got that big, Regular big, 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 big piece of glass in front of you. All you need to do is keep that glass clean and turn them down pumps on and off. That's what you do. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Thank you. But she, she's concerned. I mean, you know, the man gets around and she wants her friend six, to know. Twenty dollars on pump <laughs> yeah. six. That's all you do. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, Junior. Yeah, go ahead, Carla. I had a question. So she had sex with her sister's husband too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is that what you're saying, Shirley? That's how she knows he's he's a man whore. That's why she called him that because he gets around. Yes, yes, uh-huh. yes. And she yeah. wants to let her friend know yeah. that she well, saw the husband uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. with uh-huh. A, uh-huh. another woman, but she had mm-hmm. sex with him too. Her sister. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, right, yeah, right. Right. Now she, yeah. yeah. Now she want to help a, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot yeah. of nerve. <laughs> no, you helped him become who he is. A man. Right. You help. Come on, Junior. Come on. You help with that. I can't believe it. But you don't tell your sister, though. But I tell you what, you work at the gas station. Here's some things you can focus on. Ring these what? chips up and keep this coffee hot. That's what we need. Hello? Hello? We don't need nothing else. We need this coffee hot. Tired of coming here with this mid-hot coffee. You need to work on that. Worry about who husband in here. And where are the tops to the Slurpee? Where is the top? Where the top for the Slurpee at? You ain't got to worry about nobody husband. And why are y'all going to burn these hot dogs up? They just keep turning and turning. You done dry them out. They dry. They dry. The buns is dry. They, they, everything is dry. Stick to the pizza, okay? Yeah, just stick yeah. to the pizza. That's it. All right. Moving on to Taylor in Sarasota. Taylor says, my son's baseball coach commented on the biker shorts I wore to the game. He's an older man, so it was a side compliment. Or or was it, um, he was reprimanding me for what I wore to the game. Was it a side compliment? Was he complimenting me or was he reprimanding me? What I don't know. Doing? I don't know what he's doing. Why is you at the baseball game with your ass out? Why is you over there at the boys game like biker that? Biker shorts! <laughs> 
That's that's just way too much going on, Shirley. <laughs> The boy probably well, twelve. Sure. He, the boy probably twelve shorts. or thirteen. The ba- the kids said, don't need to be seeing this. This too much. <laughs> Biker shorts. Hard to focus when your mama walk around like that. It's hard to play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Junior. Oh man. You know, the problem is she got biker shorts something, but where the bike? <laughs> you ain't got no bike. What you got these that shorts part. on here? <laughs> <laughs> I understand why the old man offended because he had the same shorts on. Co- base, well, baseball coaches' shorts is short too. If y'all know if you don't notice that, they got the same shorts on. How do you know he on. wasn't complimenting her? How do you know that? How do you know he wasn't complimenting her? He he old. Shirley, you can't be you, you can't be compliment. That's just pretty much making a pass. Now you can't be making pass uh-huh. with the kids, mama. You can't do that. Well, here's something. Yeah, here's what we focus on. Why He's we, a man. Why, why she's a woman. What? But surely the the problem is the team losing. Why are we focus on my mama? Short? We down. We down ten runs. Why is and this You stay looking at my mama. Yeah, you stay looking at my mama. Distraction. Coach us, sir. <laughs> sir. <laughs> coach us, coach. All right, here we go. Last one, guys. Last one. Nephi in Brooklyn. Right. Nephi. My husband and I were at a reception. <laughs> That's the first Nephi. problem. Nephi. <laughs> She's out of Brooklyn. Nephi in Brooklyn says, uh, my husband and I were at a reception and he brought a lady over to me and said we had a lot in common and I need to take her to lunch because she's new in town. He doesn't understand why I'm mad. Am I overreacting or was he wrong? Okay, so think? did he just meet this person at, at a reception, or he knew this person already? Well, obviously he knew her because he said they had a lot in common, and you know, yeah, and I'm he assuming knew her. he he is something they have in common. Is that what we mm, is that what we get? I, I don't know. He <laughs> doesn't say that. He just says they the the wife and the lady have a lot in common, and the wife needs to take this woman to lunch because she's new in town. Okay, That's I got a wife. I got a wife. I wouldn't be forcing nobody on my wife or forcing my wife to go out with somebody to lunch mm-hmm. that she don't know nothing about. Right. Hey, my, my, hey, my, I, why would I do that? Don't nobody do that to their wife. Don't nobody just say, hey, babe, you need to go out to lunch with her. My wife don't, my wife don't mix and mingle like that. That, that's right. stupid. Right. right, and that's Damn what she's wrong. saying. That's what Nephi is mm-hmm. saying. Her husband done, doesn't understand why she's mad mm-hmm. that he did that. Nope. He'll take you serious because of your name, Nephi, to be honest with you. <laughs> Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. Leave Nephi alone. Nephi. What about how I feel? <laughs> That's Nephi. <laughs> I don't see Ben Graf Curtis. I sing <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I notice Jacob is not in his crib. So I look in Sarah's room. She's not there. So I'm like, okay, they're not there. Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. I'm thinking, you know, like, what's going on? Like, this is insane. Like, where are my kids? But despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Because soon after her children went missing, she was declared incompetent to stand trial. You know, when I would ask her, her in-game, it was, I've been advised to remain incompetent. And then I would say, well, who advised you? Troy, you know, I can't tell you that. In Maryland, if a defendant is found incompetent and can't be restored to competency, their felony charges are dismissed after five years. So as the clock counts down, Catherine's charges on the verge of being dismissed. Will a grieving dad ever get justice? Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. Oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles. And now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less. Every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. 
I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is. And now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful. And I should have seen it coming. Well, guys, according to the Atlanta Black Star, during the show's first stop in Virginia, rapper Kevin Gates invited a female fan to come on stage with him. Okay, a lot of rappers do that. Nothing wrong right. with that. Um, the lady did look pregnant. She stepped up from the audience onto the stage. Kevin Gates then positions her in a chair. Still nothing wrong with that. People do that all the time on stage. You bring somebody up in the audience, put them in a chair, you know. But then... This guy, Kevin Gates, tilted her head back while he was standing over her, tells her to open her mouth, and then proceeds to spit in her mouth. That ah. is the most That's disgusting nasty, thing. That's ever. nasty. That is what? so nasty. That's, what, what, yeah. what, is, what, is, what is this demonstration? What is that? What is that? Uh, uh, nothing. I'm at a loss. I mean, you've seen people, you know, entertainers bring people from the audience up right. on stage, just sing to them, dance in front of them, or let them dance with them, whatever. But this, what? But what he's kind of, you know, he does Out this kind of nasty mm -hmm. stuff before, and that's what mm -hmm. he does at his shows. But this right here, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay, let's let's let you know what. Let's Ooh. let's let's take this out. He nasty. I got that. Let's let's just go on and add that. Okay. But you but went who up is on the stage. person tilting their head back, <laughs> waiting on some spit to drop? Who is that? That's pregnant. You're right, expecting yeah, pregnant a child. Woman. Yeah, Ugh. pregnant woman out of the audience. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. When, whenever mm -hmm. she do have a baby, I can guarantee you, I'm an absentee father. <laughs> no, oh, no, don't oh, say that. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you let Kevin oh, Gates spit God. in your mouth. Oh, I'm no. done. I am paying yeah. the child support. We won't be together. I know that. God, <laughs> All right, so think about your celebrity crush, guys. What would you let your celebrity crush do? Oh, Hallie can't you. spit in my mouth. Hallie can't spit in my mouth. Hallie, you can't? sure? You no. sure? Hallie That's Barry a lot I let. I, I didn't tell you. It's a lot I let Hallie do. I let Hallie do a lot. Okay, but you can't spit in my mouth. No. That's, she that's cannot call you up on stage and tilt your head back, Halle Berry. No, no, no. it's spit in your mouth. Uh -uh. Listen, no. what, listen. What listen, if you're kissing? I, what if you're kissing Halle? I, I, I don't mind kissing uh, Halle. You stutter it Yeah. Uh huh. Halle can't spit in my. I, uh. <laughs> Halle, Tommy, no. your dream girl. <laughs> I know, I know. I just, I, I can't though. We can't mm. go that far. No, oh, I, I just oh, can't. No. I can't. I, Junior, uh -uh. you're on stage a lot. What? Why they can't just skate around, skate around like Usher? Like Usher? Or <laughs> 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 you know, Junior, Usher what would you let your celebrity crush do to you? Nia Long can't spit in my mouth. <laughs> no, no, she can't. No, she cannot. I tell you, if she spit in my mouth, her and Lorenz take me back together in Love Jones too. I tell you that one right now. <laughs> How is that tied together? Because I, I don't the movie, want her no though. more. Yeah, I don't want her no more. She oh, has to get back. Yeah, she has to get back with Lorenz at that point. That's the only time I'm going to see her. She's not spitting in my mouth. No. And then I tilt my head back. This heavy head I got, I tilt it back. No. I, I, just, I just think spitting is the lowest thing you can do, yes. man. I just yes. do. All right. Ugh. We're moving on. Well, the Exorcist believer, who believe this? It's number one at the box office right now, making about I know she was spitting. Uh, I, don't know, close I to know she billion, was spitting. Million dollars. <laughs> that's, who was, that's who was yeah. spitting right there. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's who started Man, all spitting. this spitting. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the Exorcist believer, uh, the, a sequel to, to the 1973 blockbuster. People say this is the scariest movie ever, The Exorcist. Well, uh, that debuted at number one. Uh, the movie did at almost $30 million domestically. We hear the movie is about wow. actually 27.2. Yeah. We hear the movie is about the families of two girls who go missing. I think one black, one is black, right? One uh -huh. of the girls is black. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway, uh, they come back changed, needless to say. So get ready because Exorcist may be a trilogy. The next sequel, The Exorcist Deceiver, is slated to premiere in 2025. Oh, well, <sighs> I know. Ooh, I'm I ain't seen the movie. <laughs> I am too. I, 
<laughs> I'm scared of the commercials of the trailer. I'm not, even, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to that. I'm not, I'm not getting all in them spirits. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm over there with Denzel. I'm over there with Equalizer. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I don't even want Equalizer to be next to the exes. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's a bit I, I know it's a black girl in the movie that's possessed, but I bet you if it's anything true to life, that black girl wasn't possessed long. You, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. I know somebody gonna beat the devil out of her. You my can't mama, just sit up here. Gonna beat that out yeah, here. you can't sit up okay. here. Like our parents used to tell us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, hey, is you growling at me? Who are you growling at? <laughs> right, who is you growling at? My house. In my house. house. <laughs> I bet you that devil be gone by 10 okay. p.m. I bet you that. Hey. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah, this would have been a different yeah. movie had, it, yeah. had they been black at the time. Little, yes, for sure. Yeah. Little girl would have been, the little black girl would have been back before credits ended. She back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Number one, number one. That's What's his name? People plays want to her, see it. her dad, Leslie. All right, Oldham. finally, we're going to switch gears. Oh, Leslie here. does. Uh, oh, yeah. Crush. Yeah. We're going to switch gears here and uh, talk about some trending world news. Former President Obama on Monday sharply condemned the terrorist attacks against Israel, which have left hundreds dead in recent days. Uh, we grieve for those who died. We pray for the safe return of those who've been held hostage. Uh, in addition, President Biden said that the U.S., quote, fully supports Israel's right to defend itself against indiscriminate rocket attacks from Hamas and other Gaza-based terrorist groups, Hamas, um, during his speech while insisting that he believes, quote, the Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely and to enjoy equal measures of freedom, prosperity, and democracy. We are praying for peace over there for sure. Yes, wow. we are. Yes, we yeah. all pray for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, coming up at about 20 minutes after the hour, we'll talk about the BET Hip Hop Awards, which are tonight right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Carla, what you got? The BET Hip Hop Awards are tonight. What is going down? Yes, Fat Joe <laughs> will host the BET Hip Hop mm-hmm. Awards tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. LL Cool J will present the Rock the Bells Cultural Influence Award to superstar producers and entrepreneurs Swizz Beats and Timbaland, honoring their impressive cultural contributions, talents, creativity to the pop culture, to hip hop. So that's going to be nice. Nice, giving them their flowers right mm-hmm. now. That's yes, right. I mm-hmm. love it. I love it. Also, LL Cool J Jr. and Rakim will be on hand to perform a special tribute to this year's I Am Hip Hop honoree, Molly Mall. So that's going down. Uh, there will also be a 30th anniversary tribute. I think it's going to honor So So Deaf all-star roster. You remember So So Deaf, yeah. Jermaine yeah. Dupri, yeah. mm-hmm. Bone Crusher. Mm-hmm. Bow Wow, the Brat Tat Tat Tat, Big Baby, <laughs> them franchise boys, <laughs> Luda, and more. So that's happening. Some of the nominees, 21 Savage, Cardi B, they're leading the pack, followed by Drake with nine nominations. Burner Boy, love Burner Boy. DJ Khaled, they all have about five nominations. J. Cole, six nominations. It's going down. So I will be watching tonight. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Megan Thee Stallion, The Baby, Glorilla. So my question to it's you about guys. about four, five hours. He'll sound like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's never you know, time. Hey, if you know BET, Encore presentation, mm-hmm. you know we're going to yeah. see it again. But I'm Running back. It. Yeah, yeah. I hear, too, Tommy, Bum B might be in the cypher. So we got to check that oh, out. You know, we love board. us. Yeah. yeah, we love Come us on. some Bum B. So that's what I hear. That's what I hear. So question, you guys. You know, I'm talking about the BET Hip Hop Awards. It's the 50th anniversary of hip hop. I got to shoot it back at you in case somebody missed it and, and, and missed us talking about this before. But we have. Tommy, what's your favorite hip hop song? Oh, right now. Man. Come on, Junior. Oh, right you now. now? Uh-huh. So yeah, Shirley, oh, you jump oh, in. But don't do that. Don't do that. Come on. Come on, your favorite, <laughs> all-time like. favorite hip-hop song. I'm going to tell you my favorite album right now is Reasonable Doubt. Jay-Z, first album. Jay-Z, oh, yeah. That, yes. that shaped a lot of my college yeah. life right there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling That's you. that first one right there. That's the uh, one when we got introduced <laughs> to him. Yeah. Mine is slow. 
It's Dear Mama. Oh, Pac. Yeah. Yeah, Tupac was a movement. Yeah, Tupac was cute. But Ice Cube right behind that, though. Ice Cube is right behind Right there. (laughs) (laughs) See, I love Snoop Dogg. (laughs) Really? Snoop? Snoop? Yes, yes, yes. But The Chronic, I love. That was The Chronic. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite hip-hop album. I love The Chronic. (laughs) But you know, for me, it's Biggie and Jay-Z. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Baby. BET Hip Hop Awards tonight. Thank you, Carla. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour. Who on the show? We'll play a round of that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to play, guys. Who on the show? Now, I'm going to ask you guys a series of questions, and the answer will be someone on this show, okay? So you ready? All right. This game is called Who on the Show? Who on the show? would be the first to start an OnlyFans page. <laughs> oh. Oh, I only I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Carla. <laughs> You got that right. How much money you talking, baby? It pays the bills. Only fans. I'm going to show my toes. Whatever. They showing more than gonna, toes. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say Tommy for that very reason, Tommy. Right. Oh, yeah, right, no, you want to be naked, naked for a day, uh, naked for an hour with Tommy? Yeah, I, 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 I would get with that. Who on the show would choose happiness over money? Hmm. And no one. <laughs> I, I don't know nobody. We all show. looking around. Probably you, sir. <laughs> yeah, Probably you. Shirley. Yeah, Probably Shirley. you, sir. No nope. yeah, problem, sir. And wrong. And wrong. <laughs> it it damn so ain't Steve. It ain't Steve. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who on the show will keep all of your Las Vegas secrets? Oh, I, I'm alive. That's going to be time. Right. Oh, that's me. Yeah. What? Yes, I'm yeah. Keep the I ain't gonna keep tell. All, keep, somebody keep all my Las Vegas secrets. Yeah. Hey. Oh, how long, okay. been, how long uh, has been since the last time we was down there? Ooh, Ooh, wow. Five years, six years. And I still ain't saying nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because what happens in Vegas stays yeah. in Vegas. Everybody. Uh, All right. Oh, this one's so easy. Who on the show will call in sick on a Monday? That'd be Tommy. Tommy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, then who will do it on a Thursday? Who on the show will take care of you if you were drunk, sick, and vomiting? Ew. Probably Carla. Carla. Probably Carla. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -uh. I don't even think so. (laughs) Well, hopefully it'll pay as much as the (laughs) OnlyFans. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> Learn that. If you were Gosh. drunk, sick, and vomiting. Yeah. That's, that's too right. much. That's a yeah. lot. That's, that's too much. Oh. Who on the show would give one of us a kidney? Mm. We know Steve would oh, not. That's not <laughs> going to be Uncle Steve at all. You quit looking for his kidney. No. Uh, uh, Who would give up a kidney? I, I ain't get, I, I, I done know. gave up too much. I ain't going back down there. I done told y'all. I done told y'all. <laughs> Y'all can't have nothing else on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to pass on that one. I, I, I don't do know. That, no. yeah. I'm already sick anyway, so I can't give yeah. up my kid. So that leaves me and Shirley. <laughs> and saying? I'm not. And Monica. As much as I love yeah. you guys, yeah. I really I do. I ain't giving up no kid. No. <laughs> well, that leaves Monica. Yeah. <laughs> well, that person ain't on this show. I know that. Uh, <laughs> who on the show would get revenge on an ex who cheated? Carla. Oh, oh, that'd be we Carla. all know that one. That's yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Nah. Yeah, that's Carla. <laughs> Who, who's most who's most likely to fake being sick so they don't have to show up? Steve. 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 And he go to the extreme with it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Overacting Ooh. everything. Man, they had to take all my blood out yeah. of yeah. <laughs> What? All what? your blood. <laughs> Oh, he See, would make him some lies. How you talking? How you talking to Y'all gotta start cleaning, y'all. cleaning blood. y'all blood, man. Y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Who's oh. so most likely to get into an argument with a little kid? <laughs> See? See? <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> Tommy. And then, uh, yeah, and yeah. then Tommy after him. All right, who would you most likely uh, hate to sit next to on a flight across the world? You sure, I already sure. know. I already know. Sure. I already sure. know. Oh, <laughs> like, well, man, how long is this you. flight? Ooh, where we at now? We just taking off, sure. 
<laughs> All right. When they, when, when they call us and ask us what seat we want to be in, we're like, okay, where's Shirley sit? Where's Shirley? Okay, I want to sit by her. We're not going to do that. Uh-uh. Mm-mm, I don't blame you. All right. Who's most likely to catch feelings after a one-night stand? Ooh. Oh. Junior. I, I Junior. That's Junior. That's Junior. Junior. I, yeah. I, I promise I'm catching feelings. I know. And I don't I understand why it. you don't want All to right. talk to me. I've been with him at Magic City. I didn't see him. He, he, yeah. he That's today's me, right? version of Who on the Show. Coming up next, it is a prank phone call from the nephew right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, why were they in my kitchen whispering? Hmm. We'll oh. find out what that's all about a little bit later. Uh, because right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what you got for us? This right here is FPC. What's that F-P-C. stand for? FPC. That's Funeral Picture Company. So yeah, we what we do is we come around and we 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 get your picture now, so that mm-hmm. way you get the picture that you want before your funeral. You see what I'm saying? Funeral picture company. <laughs> y'all ain't y'all ain't picked y'all picture out yet. Uh, <laughs> can't say that. I'm the only I have. one got, got y'all ain't got the picture PR program. Mm-mm. <laughs> I didn't know that why was a thing. Why would y'all not have y'all picture Thank you for y'all program? I don't care. I don't, I don't care if they don't have a program. How about yeah, that? we're dead. What do we care? care? Y'all ain't decided who gonna speak and who ain't gonna speak. Y'all ain't done all that. No. Who gonna sing? Rehearsal? Who not gonna sing? No, mm-hmm. we don't care. Uh-huh. Like Tommy, you would have a rehearsal for your funeral, wouldn't you? I, I want a funeral rehearsal. I'm just I haven't decided when I'm gonna do it, but yes, I want a funeral <laughs> rehearsal. So that way it runs the way I want it to run. I'm gonna lay there, and when it ain't right, I'm gonna pop up out that. Chair and say, no, I, this not. is not what we rehearsed. This is not. No, let's go back. Start over. Start yeah, don't say over. That about what... Don't say that about me. <laughs> That's a way to empty the church out. The yes. funeral. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. FPC Funeral Picture Company. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, Darwin. Darwin. Uh, this is he. Hey, Darwin, how you doing? This is Frank with uh, FPC. We're trying to come down and um, see about if, uh, making an appointment with you uh, within the next week, if that's possible. For, for, for what there? Uh, we're supposed to come by. I'm with FPC. We wanted to, uh, we have FPC? you on file. FPC? What, what, what is that? What is FPC? Uh, sir, your name was left with us, and you're, you're, you're on, uh, on our file to actually come out and make an appointment with you so we can... Um, so we can get your picture taken. Uh, you must have the wrong number. I'm not. I'm not signed up to take no picture or anything, sir. Okay. Well, you are. You're Darwin, correct? Yes. Yes, I am Darwin. And you call Darwin, and that's who you call it. But anything about a picture? What? what what's up with a picture? Uh, we've got you on our schedule here, FPC. We have you on our schedule to um, to actually uh, for us to come out to your home and take your picture. Okay, FPC. Which company is that? What, what, y'all, what type of picture am, would I be taking? Now, I'm not taking no picture, but what, what is FPC? Okay, you don't know anything about a photo being taken of you? Need, need no, to be sir. Taken. No. Okay, uh, sir. FPC is uh, we are. This is a funeral picture company. Uh, who? What, funeral picture company. And what we do is funeral. we come out and take your picture, and we actually keep it on file. That way. When you do pass away, we have your picture for your program, and we have a nice picture for you. Oh, man. Well, look, I'm not dead right now. You're not taking no picture of me. Now, who is this again? My name is Frank. Frank. Oh, okay, Frank. You mean to tell me y'all taking pictures of people before they die just so you could have their picture on file? So well, yeah, we keep it on file, and then you have a good picture on your program. And that's what that's what, uh, that's what we that do. Like some I ain't signed up for nothing like that. Who the hell signed me up for some shit like that? I'm, I'm not, not quite sure, but we're trying to schedule where we can come out uh, beginning of next week so we can get your picture taken. Next week, week after, you get a picture when I'm dead. You're not taking no picture of me before I die. That that don't sound right. Uh, sir, don't you want to have a good picture on your program? Sir, you're not taking no picture of me for no funeral arrangements that I'm not dead yet. I don't understand that. What the hell is this about? Nobody. Who signed me up for it then? Tell me that much. Uh, sir, I don't have the actual person listed here on who signed you up, but I do have the number, and you are Darwin, Mr. Darwin, so. 
I didn't sign up for it, and I'm not taking no pictures. Uh, uh, you guys run around taking pictures of people before they die just to have a good picture on fire? That sounds like some man. I, I ain't never heard of no like that, sir. Okay, sir, are you, I mean, we have your address here. Are, are you uh, Are you available? I'm, no, I'm not available. I'm not available at all to take no picture for a funeral. That I'm not even dead yet. I don't I don't get that. That, that sounds like a bunch of And I, I, who the hell gave you my number? That's what I want to know. Sir, I'm not quite sure, but one thing we have to do is we have to follow through with our job. So what we're going to have to do is we I have to come out there and take a picture. No. So no, I, I, no, I, I, I don't no. want to you know, create a problem, but I have to get a picture of you by next week. Oh, it's going to be a problem because you're not getting a picture of me for no funeral arrangement. Mr. Darwin, I have to come by your house at least by Friday at around 12 noon. I'll come by and get a picture Friday. of you. Friday? You ain't coming by my goddamn house no Friday. You a lie. Yeah, I be come over here to try to get my picture. I got plenty of goddamn pictures in my house to put on the mother funeral program. I'm not taking no picture. That mean I'm claiming to be dead. I'm not dead. That's some old bad little got dead. I don't know who the you work for, Frank. But you, you got that. I work. I work for FPC, sir. I work for FPC. I FCC, my. You ain't not taking no picture of me. Don't come over here Friday. Talking about no got picture. You okay, but sir. You got pistol, and you. And I hope they got your got picture on file. But that's a stupid got company you work for. I ain't never heard of nobody take no picture before they die. I got millions of pictures in here for that program. And when I'm gone, what the f I care about what a picture look like? Or who had my god funeral? This will make me you tell whoever the f you work for, they need to go find another in my occupation. That don't make no god sense. You're not coming over here Friday, buddy. You come over here if you want to. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Darwin. Yes. Are you familiar with, with uh, Glenda? Th that's my wife. What, what the f you about to say now? I w all I want to do is say this, man. I just want to say Glenda is the one that got me to prank phone call you. This is nephew Tommy, baby, from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, huh? <laughs> I'll be a <laughs> Oh, boy, you all lost your I ain't never heard of no business like this. Some FPC funeral picture taking <laughs> Well, man, I said my New Year's resolution, I was going to cut back on drinking, but you got me over here about to tip a bottle right now. Boy, <laughs> nephew, you crazy. Oh, you crazy, man. Hey, come over here today about four and get a picture of Glenda. You come take a picture. <laughs> Y'all got me, baby. You got me, I baby. Got you, man. You got hey, your wife. Man, I ain't never heard of no <laughs> company like that. Hey, your wife put me up to it, man. You go. I tell you what, you tune in tomorrow morning, man. You're going to catch yourself on national radio. I'm going to tell everybody, boy, they had me hot over here. I'm gonna, don't tell Glenda, but I'm going to have me a drink anyway. I was looking for an excuse to drink. That right there, a funeral picture taken to put on fire. Boy, y'all done, done lost a half a mind in your head with that and that, buddy. <laughs> hey, man, I got to ask you something, man. Darwin, tell me this here, man. What's the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Wake Up Show, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it. Back on my stupid grind. Y'all good with it? Y'all better be good. But everybody good with it? We have we have to be. It's yeah. not like you're gonna stop anytime soon. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we're fine. Uh, Y'all get ready for the Bridge Comedy Show. The Bridge Comedy Show, that is this coming Saturday, October the 14th. Doors open at 6. It is an 8 o'clock show. It is a Stockbridge Amphitheater that is hosted by yours truly, Nephew Tommy. You got Dominique in the building, Tony Roberts in the building, Rodney Perry, my dog in the building, and the beautiful, the queen herself, Monique, in the building. Tickets on sale right now. It is the Bridge Comedy Show this coming Saturday, October 14th. That is in Stockbridge, Georgia, at the Amphitheater. <laughs> oh, dear, you don't want to miss it. Tickets are being <laughs> sold right now. Absolutely. All right, nephew. Amen. Thank you. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter, the subject, why were they in my kitchen whispering? We'll find out right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I notice Jacob is not in his crib. So I look in Sarah's room. She's not there. So I'm like, okay. They're not there. 
Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. I'm thinking, you know, like, what's going on? Like, this is insane. Like, where are my kids? But despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Because soon after her children went missing, she was declared incompetent to stand trial. You know, when I would ask her, her in game, it was, I've been advised to remain incompetent. And then I would say, well, who advised you? Should, Troy, you know, I can't tell you that. In Maryland, if a defendant is found incompetent and can't be restored to competency, their felony charges are dismissed after five years. So as the clock counts down, Catherine's charges on the verge of being dismissed. Will a grieving dad ever get justice? Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles. And now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is. And now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. <laughs> Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful. And I should have seen it coming. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, work, dating, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, and you never know. It could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, why were they in my kitchen whispering? Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for 18 years and my husband is high school principal and I'm a retired teacher. We host an annual Labor Day get together for his staff and I get it catered. We have games in the backyard for the kiddies and they enjoy swimming and playing in our hot tub. This year was different because he has mostly females on staff. Most of them are single moms, so they came with their children. Like I said, I had the food catered and it was set up on chafing dishes on the patio. So it was strange that my husband kept running in and out of the house. He said his stomach was bothering him. The last time he went inside, he was gone for a long time. So I went inside to check on him. He wasn't in any of our bathrooms in the back of the house, so I went toward the kitchen and I heard whispering. I noticed the laundry room door was open and there was a towel on the floor. I walked in on my husband and one of the teachers in my kitchen and they stopped whispering. Her linen shorts were wrinkled and his head was dripping with sweat. He started rambling about this woman having a family, having a family emergency and she needed somewhere quiet to talk. I rolled my eyes and then she started rambling. She said she went into our laundry room to take a phone call and my husband shot her an angry look. I bet he didn't expect her to admit that she was in our laundry room. I politely told her that whatever she had going on, she should leave my house and go take care of it. She left and my husband walked her out. A month later, he's still mad at how I handled her. I am still mad that she was inside my house with him. And why was he so concerned uh, about her problems? Okay, I couldn't agree with you more. Why was he so concerned about her problems? Your husband is crazy to do that uh, so close to home and in home and right there under your nose. All the whispering, the sweating, the, the, the rambling, you know, that they were doing, the angry look he shot her, all of that, the towel on the floor. What is going on? I mean, how could he possibly think anything good could come out of running in and out of the house all during the party only to end up in the laundry room with a female staff member? 
That, this was really dumb on your husband's part. Every time he ran into the house, he was causing suspicion to you. And finally, you just went in. And the woman, what was she thinking? If it wasn't something shady going on, why didn't he just let you know what was happening with her? Uh, an emergency situation usually requires all hands on deck. They should have told you something if there was a problem. One thing's for sure, you weren't buying their story. You told her to leave to handle her emergency. And you told her nicely, politely, like you said. So your husband has some nerve being mad at you. I say he's your husband and uh, should be concerned about you, of course. Not some other woman that uh, he was fooling, fooling around with in the house. And you know that's what was going on right under your nose. Tommy. He is concerned about her because <laughs> he cares about her. And you know this already. This ain't nothing we got to tell you. You already know that. You know what was going on in that laundry room. You already know that. And they used to tight spaces. They do this at the school all the time. They've been in book rooms and all that. They've been doing this. All right? Now, you got to go on and take look at the whole picture now. It's a pool party going on. All right? So we ain't got much of no clothes on. We had we pretty much almost there. So it don't take long. You already knew it don't take but one leg. All we need is one leg. One leg could get us there. They was in there, in that laundry room. I, I, what I'm upset about with you about is why it took so long for you to go in there. Mm. Uh, you know, it, they was in there for a, he was in there for a long time. Why you let a long time go by? Why you didn't get your behind on in there and see what's going on? Now, if you really want proof, that tile on the floor tells it all. I'm just trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. If you want proof, take that tile somewhere and get it examined, and I promise you, there's some things on there. Okay? Just, just, just keeping it real with you. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. He don't like you the way he like her. He don't. Wow. After 18 he's, years. Surely he sweats for her. Did you see he that? that love and feeling. <laughs> it, it, that, that little fuzzy thing is gone. It's fuzzy with the with the with the with the chemistry teacher, or whoever she is, it's fuzzy with her. Okay. <laughs> what? What? I'm the only one fell for a teacher. I used to like a lot of my teachers. What? No, but you're teachers. the only one that said fuzzy. Yeah. Oh, I ain't mean it like that. I, that fuzzy, warm feeling is what I mean. I, okay. Uh, look, this is why I don't do these damn letters, because I don't like to say something and put my foot in my mouth. Okay? Now, if you want me to get you to Steve Harvey, see what you really got to do. See, this man right here ain't really in love with you. So, ladies, why would you give him the time of day? I think it's time for you to leave. That, that's that. That's that. That Steve Harvey mentoring, if you want that. Oh, okay. Tommy saying, Tommy uh, saying, why you yeah. ain't carry your ass in there early and find out what the hell was going on? You could have found out everything. Yeah. Bust that door open in that laundry room. They ain't got no business being up in there. But when he was in there five minutes, you should have been right on in there behind him. That's what you should have been. But well, now they whispering in, the in there, and they're whispering sweet nothings, baby. That's what you do when you through. You whisper sweet nothings. <laughs> That's what they were doing. Uh, oh, that was good. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. And then, oh, here she goes. Oh, she got to do it. Wait till we get back to school. Wait till we get to school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to meet you in the gym, therapy. All right. All right, All right nephew. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to have part two <laughs> of the strawberry letter coming up. We'll hear from Junior as well at 23 minutes after the hour. The subject of the day, strawberry letter. Why were they in my kitchen whispering? We'll get Junior's view right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go. We're going to recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, why were they in my kitchen whispering? A woman wrote in, she's been married for 18 years. Her husband is a high school principal. She's a retired school teacher. And uh, each year they host a Labor Day get together for the staff. And, uh, you know, they get it catered and everything. They have games for the kids in their backyard. The kids like to go swimming, play in the hot tub. 
et cetera, et cetera. The, the thing about this year that makes it different is most of the staff, most of her husband's staff are females and they're single moms at that. So they brought the kids. The kids are running around having a good time. But her husband is also running in and out of the house. He's told his wife that he had uh, stomach issues. So this last time he ran in, he stayed for a really long time. Um, really long time. So the wife went in to check on him. He got stomach problems. Maybe he's in the bathroom. He needs some help, right? Well, she went in the bathrooms. No sign of her husband. Oh. So she walked through the house, went through the kitchen. There he was in there whispering with one of his female staff members. Uh, she also noticed that the laundry door was open. There was a towel on the floor. Uh, and she walked in on her husband and, and this woman uh, whispering. The woman's linen shorts, the wife said, were wrinkled. Her husband's head was dripping with sweat. He started rambling about this woman having an emergency and that she needed somewhere quiet to talk. So uh, the, the wife rolled her eyes and uh, then the woman started rambling and she said she was in the laundry room. Then the husband shot her a, a crazy look, a mad look, because he didn't want her to say that they were in the laundry room. Anyway, the wife politely asked the woman to leave, handle her business, but the husband is mad at the wife because he doesn't like the way the wife handled the female staff member that was in her house with her husband in the laundry room and in the kitchen whispering. What? <laughs> so that's the pretty much the gist of this letter. Junior, what you got? Well, judge of everything that you've said, I, we have mm -hmm. some questions for you, too. Because your question uh -huh. is, why were they in my kitchen whispering? Here's a question I have. Why were you outside so long at this party? <laughs> huh? uh, thank you. Huh? Uh -huh. Why are you outside? Here's another question. Why was you in the Why was you in the pool there in the house? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You outside in the backyard. Here's another question. Why are you out here fixing plates? <laughs> you can't find your husband. Mm -hmm. He missing at your house. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? His stomach hurt. Why you ain't give him some medicine? <laughs> why you take care of your baby? Yeah. <laughs> you talking about the kitchen? It's a lot of things happening before you got to the kitchen. Uh -huh. You, you were. That, that my question. I, I tell you what. Here you go. Why was you out there talking to the math teacher? <laughs> <laughs> what y'all talking about? Your husband missing. Yeah. Okay. 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 You no, know, you worry about why they in the kitchen with me. You know how long it's been since he's been gone? A long time. It's a lot of things happened, Shirley, before they even got to the kitchen. What was you doing? Okay. <laughs> in the words of Cat like Williams. The... No, in the words of Cat Williams. Where was your antennas? <laughs> <laughs> they finally came out. That's why she okay. went in there. <laughs> now, he told y'all. Gonna... He made a whole story about, uh, you know, when she had a family emergency. Why she ain't <laughs> with her family? Why you didn't ask that? <laughs> right. huh. Huh, here's another question. How she, why you why you let her leave politely? Why she wasn't choked politely? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Politely oh, choked. I don't understand I like this. That. I like yeah. that. Yes. Oh, you had about the uh, towel, out this towel. Why that towel on the floor and not around her head? That's what I need to yeah. understand. You you got a lot of stuff. Uh, this the only question you have is why is she in my kitchen whispering. That's the only question you got. <laughs> Man, please. Mm -hmm. I can't, believe, I can't believe my wife let me go in the house that long with Carla or Shirley. Ain't no. <laughs> in the laundry room. She was in the laundry room at that? Oh, but I we're still not going to make this the wife's fault, though. No, this is clearly on the husband and this teacher. Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. But she should have bust that laundry room door. She should have. Time. She should have. What in the because downy that... is going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, the... yeah. What, what in the game? <laughs> Yeah. Are you they should at least wash. They should at least wash that tile while they was in there. Ah. They could have threw that in the wash. Yeah. <laughs> because as a wife, you know where your husband is every moment. You really do. You know yeah. when he's missing, how long he's been gone, who else is missing along with your husband. You know. You know. Right. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's but it's still not. Like it's still her husband <laughs> that I'm mad at. Why are you outside playing with other people's children? Why do well, I need to know? Because they brought the kids home. Why are you out here doing all of this? Your husband missing. This is, I don't understand. I can't see this. Yeah. Ooh, what were they What were they saying when they were whispering in the kitchen? Oh, it was so good. It was so good. It was, it was bad at school, but it was good. It was good. It was good because the adrenaline she was outside. <sighs> The danger of it all, huh? I know. But I'm the principal. Look, tomorrow I'm going to rain the fire drill. And why everybody outside, why everybody outside, we going to do it again in my office. We got to do it again. Oh, they got to do it again.
got cameras in school. <laughs> I know where the cameras ain't. I know where the uh. Oh, I know oh. where the spots at. Don't worry about that. Oh, because you were there when they yeah. installed them. You're the principal. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's right. Why well, too hard? hard. Oh. I don't know. Because we're in the kitchen. That's right. I'm talking school people. make no damn too. sense. <laughs> yeah, they're school I know, people. I know. The nerve know. of him to do that at his house to, like that. Yeah. That's crazy. And to, to do it, period. Her. To do it, yeah, period. But, but to do it at your house, at your yeah. house. Come mm-hmm. on, man. And that's disrespectful yeah. for him to be mad at his wife. Yeah. Um, all right, listen. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter. It's Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. Download it today. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, it's Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Junior is here with Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? I, I, I tell you what, man. Um, This past Sunday, but well, first of all, let me let everybody know in Bowie, Maryland. I'm coming down Bowie, Maryland, October 21st at the Bowie Center, Performing Arts Center. Go get your tickets right now, man. Me, Joe, Claire, D-Lay on the show, man. It's going to be live, man, at the Bowie Center. It's Howard Homecoming weekend at that, too. So we're going to do that October 21st at the Bowie Performing Arts Center. Go get your tickets at BowieCenter.org. Go get your tickets, man. We coming to town, man. We finna do this. All right, Junior. Ah, yeah, I'm back on it. Also, you know what time, man? I went to the Texas game, man. I was close. I'm not, you know what? We got these jerseys. I'm not mad on. at them, Junior. I'm, I'm not mad, mad at them either, but we got these jerseys on. You know, we stand out because we Texas. You know, we, we out here representing me, Deb Lee, Michael Greg. We all out here at the game. You know, we look good. <laughs> okay. And in Atlanta, I'm in here. I'm at the Mercedes Benz Stadium, everything. I'm feeling I'm feeling it. I said, like, we finna win one, everything, man. Let me tell you something. When we took the lead, Tommy, we started leaving. It was too, I said, come on. It was too much time left. Joe. Yeah, I said, come on, we got to go, man. We got to go. I said, because, you know, we, we want to win. We don't want to gloat nothing. Before we got to the exits, we done lost the damn game. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I got talked about it. I had, I had to take my jersey off. I had to look like a regular person. Because, you know, these Atlanta Falcon fan, when they see a Texas jersey, they taking pictures with you and everything. Come on, losers. <laughs> take pictures. Come on. I, I nah. Had a wonderful time. But nothing makes a Texas loss feel great than the whole thing when the Cowboys lose. Lord have mercy. <laughs> oh, I felt better about myself. They lost I bad, think, too. Man, 42 Ooh. to 10 to the 49ers. And you know what, man? They saying they want Dak Prescott out of there. They want Dak Prescott what? out. Oh, man. Uh, did y'all Already? see Stephen A. Smith, man? Stephen A. Smith yes. needs to stop this. I oh, saw my it. God. Stephen A. was laughing so hard. Laugh. <laughs> man. <laughs> Man, I can't. I was. I would. I, Stephen ain't got to stop that because he trolling them. But the crazy part about it is, do y'all think we're gonna see Trey Lance play quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys this week? Uh, they gotta do something. Hell yeah, he playing <laughs> this week. Yeah, they gotta do something. It's bad. You if you Trey Lance, week. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Dak practice. Dak Prescott in practice this week. What you saying to him, Tommy? Thank you. Uh, we got it from here. We appreciate everything you've done thus far. But what's uh, wrong with him, though? What, what? He keeps throwing interceptions. I don't know. Yeah. He's a colorblind because I saw plenty of red jerseys and one white jersey. Throw it to the one in the white. <laughs> do you want to do you want a pillow for the bench? Because that's where you're going to be sitting at. Do you yeah. want something soft to sit on? It may happen, I, man. It yeah. may happen, bro. Ooh, I, I, wow. Everybody's just tired of Dak Prescott turning the ball over. I know. It's, it's great. We'll see what happens that. Bye. All right. Well, thank you, Junior. Uh, Hang in coming, there, up the, <laughs> coming up, really coming up at the top of the hour. A guy on social media says, "I rejected my daughter's teacher's advances. Now my kid is failing." Oops. We'll talk about it right after this. That's wrong. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I noticed Jacob is not in his crib, so I look in Sarah's room. She's not there, so I'm like, "Okay, they're not there." Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. I'm thinking, you know, like, what's going on? Like, this is insane. Like, where are my kids? But despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Because soon after her children went missing, she was declared incompetent to stand trial. You know, when I would ask her, her in-game, it was, I've been advised to remain incompetent. And then I would say, well, who advised you? Troy, you know, I can't tell you that. In Maryland, if a defendant is found incompetent and can't be restored to competency, their felony charges are dismissed after five years. So as the clock counts down, Catherine's charges on the verge of being dismissed. 
Will a grieving dad ever get justice? Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Something about Mary Poppins? Something about Mary Poppins. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, man. This is fun. I'm AJ Jacobs, and I am an author and a journalist, and I tend to get obsessed with stuff. And my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, that's good. That's good. We are living in the golden age of puzzles. And now you can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears for 10 minutes or less every day on The Puzzler, short and sweet. I thought to myself, I bet I know what this is. And now I definitely know what this is. This is so weird. This is fun. Let's try this one. (laughs) Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's awful. And I should have seen it coming. All right, so this is from KJ on Steve Harvey FM. KJ says, I attended a parent-teacher night with my fourth-grade daughter about a month ago. While I was there, her teacher, Miss Leonard, not her real name, was very friendly toward me, uh, too friendly. Once she confirmed my single status through small talk, she started centering her attention on me, very obviously not paying much attention to the other parents in attendance. As we were leaving, she asked me to stay back for a second while my daughter waited in the hall. Miss Leonard asked me out. I politely declined for two reasons. One, she's my kid's teacher, and two, I really wasn't interested. She seemed okay at the time, but now, two months later, my daughter, who was getting straight A's and B's, is getting C's and D's now. Um, when I asked her what happened, she said she didn't know, but thought that Ms. Leonard didn't like her much. I think I see what's happening here, but uh, believe if I con- if I confront her with my suspicions, she'll say I'm being egocentric. And how do I prove otherwise? How do I deal with this? What do you guys think? You got to take this to the principal now. You, mm-hmm. you got to go past her. Yeah. You got to get your Over child her out of her class. Mm-hmm. Right now. That's what you but do Miss Leonard look that bad? I mean, you couldn't, like, make an exception for the baby. <laughs> she said I mean, that he wasn't interested. You could at least, you know, fake holler a little bit just to make her feel a little good, though. You didn't show no interest. You just, your baby, your baby had a C by the time you left out that room. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what do you think you should do, Junior? I'll tell you what I think you do. I think the daughter need to go in there and sit her daddy down. Listen, you got to go out with Miss Leonard. <laughs> You gonna have to go out with Miss Leonard. I got to get to the fifth grade. <laughs> I'm trying to graduate. You gonna have to take go out. One I don't for care. The team, Dad. You gonna have to take one for me as your daughter. You have to go out with Miss Leonard. I don't care where y'all go, but I'm telling you right now, it's a lot of pressure in this classroom. I'm failing. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Work. I don't feel it. my self esteem low. I don't feel good. <laughs> That's interesting that the fourth grader realized that her teacher didn't like her. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, taking it out on the wow. child. If it's yeah. that obvious, then she's yeah. taking it out on the child. I'm, t- I'm taking her apples. I ain't getting nothing. I'm taking her apples to school every day. You have to go with Miss Linda now. She wants you. You have to do this, Dad. Starbucks. Oh, I'm, man, you. I'm giving her gift cards. I'm doing everything I can. What is you doing, Daddy? Help this team. I'm doing we my have no part. Idea. I'm doing my part. We have no idea what Miss Leonard looked like, though, dude. Yeah. We have That's no all right, idea. though. But I got C's and D's, Dad. Is my education not important to you or not? That's all I need to know. I can't do it. You got to get. You got to pick up a trade. Look, I'm not going out with Miss Leonard. I'm sorry. Look, just don't look her dead in the eyes, Dad. I'm just telling you. The daughter's got to get a job. The fourth yeah. grader. Got to get a trade. Yeah. You got to learn something else. I'm going to be a skilled worker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the carpentry right. now, Dad. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I think we have time for one more. What you got? Um, this, is, this is from Luana on Steve Harvey. Uh, Luana writes, I've worked at my job for about six years. It's a small company, about 30 people total. And in my six years, I have been told happy birthday or, or given a card exactly zero times. Yet the receptionist regularly circulates birthday cards for every other employee when their big day arrives. Finally, she brought uh, she brought one to me and I left it unsigned. When she asked why, I told her that it's odd how in my entire time with the company, 
I've never even gotten one card, so I'm opting out. I mean, we all have our birthdays on Facebook, so it's not like it's a mystery. So, am I being petty? I don't really care about the card, but to me, it's about the disrespect. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fight for your birthday, girl. Fight for it. <laughs> Fight for your damn birthday. They're going to put some spec on your birthday, okay? That's right. And, and, the, next, and the next birthday, start, send, yourself a, send yourself a bunch of stuff to the office. Balloons uh-huh. and everything. Send it to oh, yourself. Celebrate by you. Don't worry about her. But don't mm-hmm. sign a damn thing on nobody else's card. <laughs> no. You're right. And your That's next birthday. Petty. Yeah, no, no, it's not. You don't never recognize my birthday. I tell you what, I'm gonna make sure everybody knows it's my birthday because he's gonna be a band. I'm bringing a whole high school band in here. <laughs> Y'all gonna ta 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 ta. You gonna know it's me. You gonna know it's me. It's my birthday. You gotta take that six years. Nah. <laughs> All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at about 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, some of you guys are going too far, really, with these Halloween decorations, okay? I mean, on this trail where I walk, this family has these big, gigantic skeletons. Yeah. I mean, yeah. whoa, it's just, and big head skeletons all over the, it's just creepy and scary looking. There's a house in Glen Falls, New York, decorated with a a lit up jack-o'-lantern, several of them, as a matter of fact, and a flame effect inside all three of the home's front facing windows. Uh, It makes the house look as if it is engulfed in flames. I saw this. It does look like exactly like that. Firefighters mistakenly were called to the house because people thought the house was on fire. Firefighters said the house was actually not on fire and the homeowners achieved the flame effect with Two lead lights, okay, a box fan, and a silver sheet and a fog machine. <laughs> so if you want to make it look like your house is LED on fire. Lights, sir. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Two yeah. LED lights, yeah. a box yeah. fan, a silver sheet, and a fog machine. So do you guys see, decorate I, for Halloween at all? a lot of people get their ass whooped on Halloween because they go too far <laughs> with this stuff. I, I'm telling you, black people don't. Black people not doing all that. I, we fact, don't do all of we this. Cut the, we cut our porch light off. We're not even doing this. We're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all not giving our candy to the baby. If you knock on this so. dough, I'm telling you, it's not gonna go the way you want it to. No, we're not giving out nothing. It's just what? like it's just like my grandmother said. I'm not inviting ghosts and spirits in here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All right, happy that. Halloween, everybody. Uh, coming up in 33 minutes after, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. We don't have no tricks around here. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather do it outside in 32-degree weather? That's freezing mm-hmm. right there, 32 mm-hmm. degrees outside. Or would you rather do it in 100-degree weather? I have to take the hundred. Yeah, we know he got to take the hundred. <laughs> yeah, he, can, he, he ain't got no, no option. <laughs> I ain't got no yeah. option. I mean, I did thirty-two <laughs> degrees just out here hollering with a sickle cell crack. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out there in that thirty-two though. Yeah. Are you? What freezing? Oh, we gonna warm it up. We gonna we gonna we gonna melt snow. We gonna warm it up. Trust me. <laughs> okay, no. <don't>. Hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm the only one right. been outside naked in the snow. Yeah. I'm the only yes. one. Yeah, on yeah and show. I grew up there. On this show. You know what? You know what? You know <laughs> yeah. what? I'm, I'm so, you know what? You didn't get freezing. Y'all in these, y'all in these brands. Y'all can't tell. The truth. <laughs> All right. Would you rather receive a mysterious message in a fortune teller's reading, or would you rather have a friendly ghost as your roommate? <laughs> yes, <sir>. A ghost? <laughs> uh-uh. In my house. As your roommate, uh-uh. it's fr- a friendly ghost. Uh-uh. We don't, we don't know that. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm telling you it is. You ain't seen ghosts on Facebook talking about I'm friendly. I ain't never seen it on Facebook. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Give me the fortune teller. I can take that. Yeah, I'm going to deal with the fortune teller. <laughs> yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. We don't do that. Uh-uh. Yeah, what's her name? Miss Cleo? What back in the yeah, day? Yeah, uh-huh. give me Cleo. Somebody like that. <laughs> All right, would you rather be the lead investigator in a haunted house documentary or would you rather be the star of a chilling, a really scary horror film? Come on, Tommy, the actor. I know what I'm yeah, let's see you star in uh-huh. Exorcist the Believer, uh-huh. Mr. Actor. <laughs> I don't mind being in the movie because when we say cut, you better cut. Now, you better not keep on going with this. <laughs> Stay in character. You know all the problems they had We ain't got time for no method acting exorcist. at that time. <laughs> 
So you're going to be the star of a chilling horror film? That's time. Surely it ain't going to be for 15 minutes. It's going to be over so quick. <laughs> Why? Because black people die early. Because I'm in it. It's a short film. I'm not going to be able to make it to the end, Carl. I can't. <laughs> no. Junior, no. lead no. investigator in a haunted yeah. house documentary yeah. or an actor. I'm a lead investigator in a, in a haunted house. That's what I'm, I'm leading. But I'm doing it from outside. I'm leading my investigation from outside. I told y'all to get y'all ass out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I told y'all. I don't care who did it, but I'm not coming in. <laughs> I'm going to do this from the driveway. Hey. You're outside with, with a megaphone. <laughs> yeah, hey. I told y'all, y'all needed to move last week. All right. All ghosts and goblins outside, please. <laughs> would you rather say what you're thinking, or would you rather never say anything again? Would you rather always say what you're thinking, always say what's on your mind, or never say anything again? Which one? No, I'm going to say, I'm gonna have to say I'm what's gonna, on my mind. I'm say everything Because that, that build up stress when you got all that kicked up in there like that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say whatever on my mind. Okay. All right, thank you guys. That's today's round of Would You Rather. Coming up at 49 minutes after our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I noticed Jacob is not in his crib. So I look in Sarah's room. She's not there. So I'm like, okay, they're not there. Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. I'm thinking, you know, like, what's going on? Like, this is insane. Like, where are my kids? But despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Because soon after her children went missing, she was declared incompetent to stand trial. You know, when I would ask her, her in-game, it was, I've been advised to remain incompetent. And then I would say, well, who advised you? Should, Troy, you know, I can't tell you that. In Maryland, if a defendant is found incompetent and can't be restored to competency, their felony charges are dismissed after five years. So as the clock counts down, Catherine's charges on the verge of being dismissed. Will a grieving dad ever get justice? Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, guys, here we are, last break of the day on this Tuesday. It's been a good day. You know Steve will be back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he'll be back. Mm -hmm. Isn't Halloween on a Tuesday? Is it? Let me check. The 31st. I don't know, T. Yes, it what? is, Tommy. It is on the Thursday. I'm going to let y'all know. I'm going to be off on Halloween. <laughs> but that's Tuesday. You're off, you're off on but it's a holiday. You're off day. It's a holiday, ain't it? Well, is no, Halloween it's actually, a holiday? No, not officially. Just, is Halloween a holiday? It's not a holiday or I mean, don't, don't, like don't fight me Christmas, on it. it's like Halloween Thanksgiving, like it's not oh, like that. No, you don't get well, a day a off from work. Like yeah. banks are closed or schools no, are closed or anything like that. It's, it's not just, official. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just Halloween. So mm -hmm. no, if they had ghosts in the bank, then the bank would be closed. But I'm just saying, <laughs> it's a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> what would they do? Be tellers? I mean, really, <laughs> loan <laughs> officers? <laughs> Well, I have a I question. I have a question because earlier uh -huh. we were talking about how Shirley was saying people go too far. We did a story about uh, Halloween oh, decorations. Oh, yeah, the guy. Uh -huh. Yeah, and these, uh, this house in New York and the flame mm -hmm. effect and all that. I like Halloween trick-or-treating. I like all that. Y'all are not into it like that? I don't like Halloween. I ain't like to. My costumes never look good. <laughs> I got tired what of dressing up. What do you mean? No, my mom didn't have no money for the whole costume. You know, like saying, like, I'm Superman, but I just got the S on the shirt. I ain't got the tights or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using my same bath towel as a cape. This ain't, this ain't fun. <laughs> Why I use everything I got at home to make a costume? I don't like that. <laughs> Did nobody believe I, I was like fast at the leap of building in a single bound? They didn't believe that. They didn't believe none of that. <laughs> Faster than speeding. Yeah, my cape had bleach stains on it. Come on now. I don't like that. <laughs> Well, my mama gave me just a sheet one day. I didn't know if I was a ghost or a clansman. I didn't know what I was. <laughs> Outfits didn't look good. I, my I, I worst like one. My yeah, my I, I don't mind Halloween, you know. I, I don't mind it, it especially for kids. You get to dress up and yeah. all that. Yeah. You know, so costumes and stuff. But um, I, I just, like, when we were kids in Chicago, we could go trick-or-treating, you know, to, on our block and stuff. But one night, I got my bags, and we would be out at night, 
And one night I got my bag full of candy because it was almost time to go in. That's how you knew it was time to go because your bag was full. And somebody just, one of the big kids just came by and snatched my bag of candy. In and Chicago. I had to start all over again. Yeah. See, I, I, don't, I don't like it. Yeah. yeah. My I didn't like that. That, that was but I don't. I don't let my kids eat their candy, though. No, no. not anymore. No. You can't. No. no. Uh, you let the kids, yeah. what you do, you let them trick-or-treat for the uh, sake of the activity, and mm-hmm. then you tell them, throw all that away, and then you get yeah. the candy you got. <laughs> you bought, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But back in the day, we used to kid eat the candy. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I quit Halloween at nine. That was my last time. I was tired. It was too much. So you didn't trick-or-treat after nine years old? Uh-uh, you? no, I quit, because all the costumes and stuff we already had at the house. What? <laughs> so what? Okay, so you were Superman. You didn't like that. Okay, what I didn't else? like that one. Okay, he well, wasn't I, Superman. Okay. He just had an S on his shirt. I had, had an S on my shirt. It didn't look nothing like Superman. Nothing. <laughs> okay. 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 Another costume I like. Like all the stuff we used was in the house already. Like all my hobo. Now my mom put makeup on my black in my eye and did you go get a shirt out the dirty clothes hamper and my jeans already had a tan in it. Now I'm out here talking about who is you? I'm a hobo. Did nobody even know what I was? They thought I was lost. I ended up at a shelter. That's what I ended up at. <laughs> You're traumatized by Halloween. Somebody had saw me out there trick or treat, picked me up, and took me to a shelter. They didn't know where my parents were. It's like none of my costumes. I couldn't stand it. I quit Halloween so by were, now. You were Superman. You were homeless. Mm, nah. No one year I had a, I had a, I was a fat boy one year. Fat boy. Like doing fat boys. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the rappers. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. the rappers. The fat boys. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. I was a fat boy. I was a fat boy rapper, right? Now I'm wearing my daddy Kango. Okay, my daddy Kango. <laughs> stuff we already had at the house. We ain't never went to the store and get no costume. Everything was at the house. Now I take my pills that I sleep on, stuff under my shirt, and I'm going out here. It's hot under here. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm, my mama sorry, put her, Junior. I'm wearing my I'm mama sorry. chains. My mama gold chains. I got them on. I got a chain on. Yeah, I got a chain on. Say Leisha on it. Did nobody believe I was a bad boy? <laughs> Did nobody believe me? I don't like Halloween. You always had to explain your costume. Yeah, I, every time everybody house, who is you? Okay, I'm, you remember the group, the fat boys? I'm, I'm, okay. I'm the dark skin one. <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound party. Ha, ha, ha. I can't do none of this. I'm tired. Oh, you can eat. I love it. Uh-uh. I, go to, I go to work. I had one Halloween. I was a, I was a nurse. You know why I was a nurse? Because my mama was a nurse. I got her scrubs on. <laughs> we never went and bought costumes. Everything was in the house already. I got scrubs on and her name tag, Nurse Alicia. I can't believe, why is your name on everything? <laughs> That's why I don't care for Halloween. I don't care for Shout it. out to all the male nurses out there, by the way. <laughs> well, it don't work for candy. It sure don't work for candy. <laughs> But you know, <laughs> we're talking about costumes, costumes and the how much it costs back in the day. They're expensive. They're like $40, 30 oh, 40 yeah. 50 dollars, these yeah. costumes oh, yeah. today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're really, really expensive. Color. Yeah, they're 40 30 dollars. Really? So we yeah. never went and bought one. We didn't. I wouldn't go to the store. <laughs> They got they got some they got some rubber mask out there that look really real though. They got Ooh, some really yeah. good stuff scary, out there. Scary, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're scary looking. They yeah. are. I know in Chicago growing up, you better put your costume. We did have costumes, Junior, but you had to put them on top of your clothes. So you can imagine how crazy that Cold. looked. Yeah. <laughs> Take us home, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. In the word, let the words of my uncle talk to God. He would love to hear from you. Until then, we be in peace. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit SteveHarveyFM.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The system's broken. I said, something's wrong here, you know, whenever a woman's allowed to kill my two kids. Unrestorable is a new true crime podcast that investigates the case of Catherine Hoggle, a mother accused of murder. Despite signs that Catherine Hoggle took her tiny children one by one into the night, never to come home again, she has yet to stand trial. Listen to Unrestorable on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Dressing. Dressing. Oh, French dressing. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, that's good.
I'm AJ Jacobs, and my current obsession is puzzles. And that has given birth to my new podcast, The Puzzler. Something about Mary Poppins? Exactly. (laughs) This is fun. You can get your daily puzzle nuggets delivered straight to your ears. Listen to The Puzzler every day on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Paul Muldoon, a poet who, over the past several years, has had the good fortune to record hours of conversations with one of the world's greatest songwriters, Sir Paul McCartney. The result is our new podcast, McCartney, A Life in Lyrics. Listen to McCartney, A Life in Lyrics on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Curtis Fitzson Jackson. And I'm Charlie Webster. The podcast Survive in El Chapo, the twins who brought down a drug lord, returns for a second season and picks right back up with Pete and Jay Flores taking their first steps on U.S. soil after turning themselves in to the U.S. government. When the plane landed, I think it was the first time I ever felt like, why are we doing this? Hear details from their 14-year prison sentence and what it was like to go head-to-head against El Chapo in court. It was so ugly to be in that courtroom. I'm sick to my stomach. Surviving El Chapo. Listen to season two. On iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get podcasts.